older kiddies, I'm Gary, the Vacuum Tube Witch. This one is pretty related to what I'll be doing on the bench. Because I've got this Visomat uh, exposure timer that I was mentioning in my last video. And it's time to take it apart, turn it on. Then turn it on, take it apart. <laughs> I'll first turn it on. So this is the Visomat uh, vintage exposure timer that uh, comes from a uh, offset uh, typesetting plate exposure unit. I got it from the Book Art Museum. Took it off the wall from uh, a uh, room where we were using for exposing the offset plates, but uh, we were repurposing the room for the matrix uh, storage, so all uh, equipment and all plumbing had to go. I discombobulated the old uh, exposure device and decided to keep this uh, timer because um, First, it's uh, interesting in, in how it's built. Second, it's vintage. Uh, I think it's one of a kind, at least in my country. It was made in 1960s Germany. And there is no data, no info on the internet about it. But before I take off the cover, I will show you how this works, because uh, I got it to run and I, uh, I uh, can uh, demonstrate the operation. So, uh, let's zoom on in. So we've got two dials on uh, the device. The upper dial Pulse the operating wheel and scale, winds up the timer, the bottom dial sets the limit on the orange uh, rotary dial scale. The more units, uh, the longer the device can get um, to run. It's, uh, it goes up to 100. Well, it goes past 100, but uh, that's uh, another story. It has a, a mechanical stop uh, that uh, limits uh, the range um, this uh, dial can be rotated, and uh, there's another mechanical stop that uh, limits uh, the operating dial to what is set on the the timer limit uh, dial. Now uh, the power is off, but I will turn it on now. And uh, the device uh, uses a uh, photocell uh, as a uh, light sensor. And uh, when the photocell is active, uh, the operating dial will go down. When covering the photo cell with my hand, you'll see that uh, there's no rotation. Almost no rotation because a uh, teeny tiny quantum of light, uh, just a photon, uh, might be enough to get it going eventually. But uh, when lit, it goes way faster. And uh, it uh, went uh, insanely fast uh, in the original version. And now I uh, added a uh, 
hundred mega resistor to the to, in line with uh, the photo cell so that uh, I can uh, reduce the current and slow it down. But we can see how this uh, does with um, no resistor in line with uh, the photo cell. Of course, I uh, also reverse engineered uh, this thing and uh, I, I will show you the schematic later on. So let's try without the resistor. The photosaur has uh, parallel uh, pins. Uh, number 1, 2 and uh, 6, 7 so I can uh, connect the wire to any of, um, of those um, pins and uh, that will do the same uh, thing as uh, if I did it uh, on pin number 1. Forgive me for my dodgy budgy southern job. <laughs> It's just temporary. So, power on. I will cover the photo cell and turn up the operating dial all the way. This is with my hand uh, covering the photo cell. But if I uncover it, it goes down like crazy. <laughs> so you might ask what in, what's inside. First I'd rather take off the knobs. And we're getting in. Uncovering the truth. So we've got a frame uh, for the mechanism, a terminal block. There's a vacuum tube in it. This is in fact a Fibertron Z5823, just like this one. I already covered this type of Fibertron in another device uh, I made a, a video about. And this is a ceramic terminal block uh, for connecting the photo cell. And a uh, neon lamp uh, indicating that um, the device is active. So let's get a little bit deeper.
There's a uh, rubber seal on uh, the die-cast aluminum expo enclosure that uh, <coughs> clearly a sign of uh, great uh, craftsmanship. Spare no expense, cost no object. That's why I love German engineering. Everything back then was so well made. So this is the die-cast aluminum bottom part of the enclosure. Heavy and industrial. And this is the inner life uh, of um, the exposure timer. We'll look uh, underneath uh, the mechanism uh, real soon, but uh, now it's time to look um, beneath the chassis. So uh, we've got a uh, single wave uh, selenium rectifier, a fuse holder, two high voltage electrolytic capacitors, a bunch of resistors, and also a capacitor. So, time to take a look at the mechanism. This is the Firetron socket and uh, those wires uh, go to the neon lamp. Those uh, wires come from the photo cell. Now let's uncover the truth some further. Revealing the cool mechanism inside. And this is where the magic happens. Because uh, this contact this is what uh, switches the neon lamp uh, and uh, the exposure lamp. And uh, when uh, the diode, the operating diode is uh, in its uh, neutral position, the cam will press on the switch. The switch is normally closed. <coughs> so if we turn the diode, The cam moves away and the switch will become closed. And uh, what happens now? is that uh, whenever there's coming there's current going through the photo cell the relay coil will be pulsed and this not only drives uh, the contacts of the relay but uh, also drives the escapement mechanism because there is an uh, escapement mechanism beneath this plate. Come on, focus. <laughs> There's an uh, escapement mechanism that uh, holds uh, this, uh, this wheel. Now uh, we're back at the neutral position. get down further to the heart of the mechanism. The cam 
All made of metal. None of that icky plasticky rubbish. Spare no expense. The cam is uh, placed on the shaft uh, of the operating wheel, so this is uh, directly coupled uh, with the operating dial. Ready to dig a little bit deeper. So here we are with the escapement wheel and there's a uh, flat spring inside. I think that I might have uh, wound uh, the spring a little bit too tight. Almost tighter than ever Granger slices and uh, it will need some slack. Not sure if I can. Uh, not sure if I can make it any looser now. That's uh, that's gonna take some figuring out. But uh, here we've got the escapement mechanism. I applied some uh, Vaseline oil to get it. Uh, running nice and smooth. So this is what uh, drives, uh, and this is what lets the, the wheel turn. <coughs> and also what uh, blocks the wheel from uh, moving back uh, on its own. And uh, some of those teeth they are actually quite worn and uh, that's why you saw the operating wheel move back uh, more than just uh, one uh, tooth. Uh, it was skipping pretty badly and I think this is because of uh, the wear to the device. And there's a, of course, there's a uh, power transformer in it, and a uh, nameplate with uh, with the type and uh, ratings. It's BWS2, factory number nineteen thousand eight hundred seventy one, made for two hundred twenty volts, and uh, it takes uh, thirty milliamps. There's the connection plate also. Uh, the first, uh, it's uh, it's pretty worn. Uh, the first uh, contact is uh, is the ground. Second and third are the incoming supply. Fourth uh, is not connected at all. Fifth and sixth, um, those contacts uh, go to the exposure unit. Uh, for controlling the, the uh, exposure lamp. And in the device I uh, discombobulated, it was uh, originally an uh, arc discharge lamp and uh, later on uh, it was converted to mercury vapor discharge lamps. 
So uh, that would be the little teardown of the device. I will do some adjustments uh, and uh, put it back together off the camera. And now, for the schematic. There we have it. So we've got the main terminal block, uh, the black one. This is the exposure switch uh, and the transformer. Then the neon lamp and the fuse. On uh, the other side, uh, we've got the rectifier and power supply and the relay circuit. Then the relay is uh, operated by the Firetron. And uh, whenever a current passes through the photo cell, see that uh, there's a uh, high um, serial uh, resistance, uh, one and a half mega ohm. So whenever a current uh, goes through the photo cell, it comes in uh, through this additional 47k resistor, charges the 470 picofarad uh, capacitor. When this is charged, um, it fires the Firetron. And the Firetron will conduct uh, until the supply is cut off. This is done by the normally closed uh, contact on the relay. So the relay activates and by activating, it moves uh, the escapement mechanism forward. And uh, also, it uh, turns off the Firetron so that uh, this is reset and ready for another cycle. There's also one more contact uh, when, uh, when the Firetron conducts uh, and uh, activates the relay. This contact is also getting closed, discharging the 470 picofarad capacitor. So uh, the when, uh, when this uh, contact closes again, the Firetron will not see voltage on the ignition electrode, so it will stay uh, turned off uh, and wait uh, until the photo cell passes the, the current uh, to activate it. And that's pretty simple. Simpler that, uh, than uh, you might have thought. Just a teeny tiny bit of electronics. <laughs> now you, now you wouldn't uh, even think about uh, building such a thing without uh, microcontrollers. But here, we've got no microcontrollers. We've got vacuum tubes. We've got electromechanics. And I think I forgot about uh, one capacitor, adding one capacitor on the schematic. So there's, uh, there's one, uh, there's this uh, 
20 nanofarad capacitor that uh, comes in uh, back from the photosol and goes to ground. So this is the capacitor that uh, charges uh, when uh, when we've got uh, the photocell in operation. And my wild guess is that uh, I could even uh, add one more capacitor to make a time constant uh, even larger I could even try to fire up uh, the device uh, when it's in uh, the discombobulated state so it's clicking and clicking and clicking And then the closer I move uh, the photocell to a light, the faster it clicks. I wonder if I can show you. And there's one more interesting thing. That uh, when the photosol activates, it will glow purple. And the Fivertron will also glow purple. Trying to do a feedback. Tubular blinking lights. So that would be the Visomat exposure timer. A very interesting device from the 1960s. Lovely build, spare no expense, cost no object. So, without further ado, stay determined and carry on. <laughs>